biodiversity and need of classification. Last year, we have already learned that all the living organisms on Earth have adapted according to geographic regions. Food ingestion defense, etc. While adapting, many differences are observed in the organisms of the same species too. According to 2011 census, around 87 million species of living organisms are found on the earth, including land and sea. To study such a vast number, it was essential to divide them into groups. Therefore, groups and subgroups of living organisms were created considering the similarities and differences among the living organisms. This process of dividing living organism into groups and subgroups is called biological classification. Today's biological classification of living organism is an outcome of the efforts of many scientists. Many scientists have contributed in the development of present classification system. Come, before studying the present system of classification, let us peek into the history and quickly revise about classification carried out by different scientists. In history, in 1735, Carl Linnaeus was the first scientist who divided living world into two kingdoms, Vegetablia and Animalia. In 1866, Haeckel considered three kingdoms for classification of living organisms, Protesta, plants and animals. In 1925, Chetan created two groups of living organisms, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In 1938, Copeland divided living organisms into four kingdoms, monera, protesta, plants and animals. Come, let us now move on to study about the system used for classification of living organisms. Classification of living organisms Robert Harding Whittaker was an American ecologist. In 1969, he proposed five kingdom system of classification for which he considered five criteria. Complexity of cell structure in living organisms, complexity of organisms, mode of nutrition in them, their lifestyle and phylogenetic relationship among them. Come, let us now learn how Whittaker classified living organisms on the basis of these five criteria. Complexity of cell structure Whittaker divided all living organisms in two groups, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, considering their cell structure. Organisms which do not have definite nucleus in their cell were included in group prokaryotes, while the organisms which have definite nucleus in their cell were included in group eukaryotes. Complexity of organisms Prokaryotes and eukaryotes were further divided on the basis of number of cells present in them. Organisms which were made up of only one cell were called unicellular organisms, whereas organisms which are made up of more than one cell were called multicellular organisms. Since all prokaryotes are made up of only one cell, this group included only unicellular organisms. On the other hand, eukaryotes included both unicellular as well as multicellular organisms. Unicellular prokaryotes were further classified in first kingdom, that is, kingdom monera, and all unicellular eukaryotes were classified in second kingdom, that is, kingdom protista. Mode of Nutrition Whittaker further classified multicellular eukaryotes on the basis of their mode of nutrition into three kingdoms, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Fungi included organisms which have a cell wall but cannot perform photosynthesis to make their own food. These organisms are called 
Saprophytes. Saprophytes absorb their food from dead organisms. Kingdom Plantae included all plants in which cell wall is present. Plants can make their own food by performing photosynthesis. Therefore, plants are called autotrophs. Kingdom Animalia included all animals. In animals, cell wall is absent and they cannot make their own food. They directly or indirectly depend on plants for their food. Therefore, animals are heterotrophs and are ingestive. Lifestyle Whittaker also considered the lifestyle of organisms while classifying them. Since plants can make their own food, they are termed as producer. Animals get food from other animals or plants. Therefore, they are termed as consumers. Fungi get their food from dead and decaying organisms and in turn, they also decompose the organisms. Therefore, they are termed as decomposers. Phylogenetic relationship Phylogenetic relationship among living organisms were also taken into consideration by Whittaker while classifying living organisms. Living organisms were arranged according to their evolutionary history. Therefore, prokaryotes came before eukaryotes and unicellular organisms came before multicellular organisms. Whittaker's Five Kingdom system of classification gave concrete basis for classifying living organisms. This system of classification helped to make categorization of most of the organisms easy. However, despite these merits, Whittaker's system of classification also had some demerits. The major demerit of Whittaker's classification is that viruses have not been given proper place in this system of classification. Parasitic plants which have a cell wall but do not perform photosynthesis were also included in Kingdom Plantae. Despite the demerits, Whittaker's Five Kingdom system of classification is still widely accepted for the study and classification of living organisms. After learning about how Whittaker's Five Kingdom system of classification was formed, this year we will study only about three kingdoms, that is, Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protista, and Kingdom Fungi in detail. Kingdom 1, Monera let us study about Kingdom Monera with the help of a small activity. Activity Take a small drop of curd or buttermilk on a clean glass slide. Add one drop of water on it to dilute. Now, carefully put a clean cover slip on the slide with the help of a mounting needle. Observe this prepared slide first under low power and then under high power of a compound microscope. What do you see under the microscope? We see small, rod-shaped microbes moving under the microscope. These are lectobacilli bacteria. They belong to Kingdom Monera. All types of bacteria and blue-green algae, that is, cyanobacteria, are included in Kingdom Monera. Some general characteristics of Kingdom Monera are All organisms are unicellular prokaryotes, that is, they are made up of only one cell without distinct nucleus or cell organelles. These organisms may be single or appear in the form of chains or clusters. Organisms of Kingdom Monera may be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Some examples of organisms belonging to Kingdom Monera are Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Clostridium titanae, Clostridium botulinum, Salmonella typhi, Vibrio cholera, Legionella pneumophila, and Tryponema pallidium. Come. Let us now study about Kingdom Protista. Kingdom 2. Protista. 
Let us begin with the study of Kingdom Protesta with the help of a small activity. Activity Collect water from a pond. Take a drop of it on a clean glass slide. Now put a clean cover slip on it with the help of a mounting needle. This is a temporary mount of pond water. Observe this temporary mount first under low power and then under high power of a compound microscope. What is observed under the microscope? Hmm. We see irregular shaped microbes moving under the microscope. These are amoeba. They belong to Kingdom Protesta. Come, let us quickly go through some general characteristics of organisms included under this kingdom. All organisms of Kingdom Protesta are unicellular eukaryotes, which means that they are made up of single cell and have a well-defined nucleus enclosed in a nuclear membrane. Some organisms of this kingdom are motile. For example, Amoeba moves with the help of pseudopodia. Paramecium moves with the help of hair-like structures called cilia. While Euglena moves with a whip-like structure called flagella. Protests may be autotrophic, for example, Euglena and Volvox, or heterotrophic like Amoeba and Paramecium. Come. Let us study about the third kingdom, that is, Kingdom Fungi, in detail. Kingdom 3, Fungi. Let us begin with the study of Kingdom Fungi with the help of a small activity. Activity. Take a moist slice of bread or bhakri. and keep it in a container with lid for two to three days. After two to three days, what do you observe? Hmm. Hmm. We see fine cotton thread-like tuft growing on the surface of the bread. Take few of these threads on a clean glass slide. Put a drop of water on it and cover the threads with a clean cover slip. Observe this temporary mount under the compound microscope. What is observed under the microscope? We see thin, colorless, branched, thread-like filaments with black-colored rounded structures under the microscope. Come. Let us draw and label each part of the fungi. After this small activity, let us discuss few general characteristics of this kingdom. Fungi are non-green, eukaryotic, heterotrophic organisms. Most of the fungi are saprophytes. They feed upon dead and decaying organic matter. Cell wall of fungi is made up of tough and complex sugar called chitin. Some fungi are thread-like and many nuclei are present in the cytoplasm. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that is baker's yeast. Asparagulus, a fungus which generally grows on corn. Penicillium a fungus from which antibiotic penicillin is made. And mushrooms, an umbrella-like fungus, are some examples of organisms belonging to kingdom fungi. After studying about three kingdoms of living organisms, let us now proceed to the last part of this chapter. Classification of Microbes Among the living organisms, Microorganisms are largest in number. Hence, there is a need to classify microorganisms. Come, let us learn about each of these groups of microbes one by one. Good to know.
Microbes are measured in micrometer and nanometer. One meter is equal to 10 raised to 6 micrometer. Micrometer is also called micron. One meter is equal to 10 raised to 9 nanometer. Bacteria. The size of bacteria ranges between 1 micrometer to 10 micrometers. Bacteria are unicellular, independent of parasitic organisms. Sometimes many bacteria together form colonies. Bacterial cell is prokaryotic with cell wall, but distinct nucleus and cell organelles are absent. Bacteria are found in different shapes. They reproduce asexually by simple binary fission. In favorable conditions, bacteria grow vigorously. Some bacteria can double their number in 20 minutes only. After learning about bacteria, let us learn about another group of microbes that is protozoa. Protozoa The size of protozoans is approximately 200 micrometers. Protozoans are found in soil, fresh water and sea water. Amoeba and paramecium are free-living protozoans found in dirty water. Some protozoans are found in the body of other organisms and are pathogenic. For example, Antamoeba histolica is found in the intestines of human beings and causes amoebiasis. Plasmodium vivex is found in the bloodstream of human beings and causes malaria. Protozoans are unicellular organisms with eukaryotic cell. There is great variation in cell structure, organs of locomotion, and modes of nutrition among protozoans. Protozoans reproduce asexually by simple cell division. After learning about protozoans, let us now proceed to study about one more group of microbes, which is group fungi. Fungi The size of fungi ranges from 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. Fungi are found on decaying organic matter and dead bodies of plants and animals. These are eukaryotic organisms. Some of them are unicellular, example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and others are visible with naked eyes, like mushrooms. These organisms are saprotrophic, that is, they absorb their food from decaying organic matter. They reproduce sexually and asexually by cell division or by budding. Baker's yeast, candida and mushroom are few examples of fungi. Let us now study about algae. Algae. The size of algae ranges from 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. Algae are aquatic. They are eukaryotic organisms. Very few species of algae are unicellular like chlorella and chlamydomonas. Most of the algae are multicellular and visible with naked eyes. For example, Spirogyra. Algae are autotrophic organisms. Photosynthesis is carried out by them with the help of chloroplast present in their cell. Do you know, along with these groups, viruses are also classified as microbes as they cannot be seen with naked eyes. Come, let us discuss about this group of microbes in brief. Viruses. Generally, viruses are not considered as living organisms. They are said to be organisms at the edge of living and non-living. Viruses are studied in the field of microbiology. Some general characteristics of viruses are Viruses are extremely minute. They are 10 to 100 times smaller than bacteria. 
The size of viruses ranges between 10 nanometers to 100 nanometers. Viruses can be viewed only under the electron microscope. Viruses are found in the form of independent particles. A virus is a long molecule of DNA or RNA covered by a protein coat. Viruses can survive only in living plant or animal cells where they produce their own proteins with the help of host cell and create their numerous replica. Then they destroy the host cells and become free. These free viruses again infect new cells. Viruses cause many diseases in plants and animals. Polio virus, influenza virus, HIV are some examples of viruses which cause disease in humans. In animals, Picona virus causes many diseases. For example, foot and mouth disease in cattle. Tomato wilt virus and tobacco mosaic virus cause diseases in tomato and tobacco plants. Some viruses even attack bacteria. Such viruses are called bacteriophages. Institutional work National Institute of Virology, Pune, is involved in research on viruses. This institute has been founded in 1952 under the jurisdiction of Indian Council of Medical Research.